Okay, so 52 Pi contacted me recently about some new products they've got coming out, and I've got two NVMe boards which will come to me when they're in stock. Uh, but they also said, do I want to have a look at any other products? And I saw this three and a half inch screen, which actually comes with a case as well, and a little stylus, and I really liked it. And in this use, uh, you can see on the Pi Man case, it just fits into the GPIO pins at the top, and we have P sensor on display all the time. But it is actually running Raspberry Pi OS, so this is on a Raspberry Pi 5. I had to install the drivers, and we do have a little bit of a strange thing where I move the mouse, you can see that it flickers like a sort of disco style flicker, and that's because there must be some sort of overlap with the Pion Man drivers and also the display drivers. But I'm not so worried about that uh, at this stage. I would like to get it where this outputs from the HDMI, so you can have a dual display, but you could also have this display. I haven't managed it yet. Um, this only works on the X11 window manager, so Wayfire and Lab WC doesn't work with this display. But let's shut this down and show you a little bit more about this display. So you can see it's fully working Raspberry Pi OS on a tiny, tiny three and a half inch screen. If I spin it to the side, you can see what it looks like. So it's very flush. I can also just sort of prise it off as well. well let's switch it off first and prise off just to show that it's simply connected with GPIO pins. So you could obviously extend them and put the screen somewhere else. But uh, yeah, really nice design and really quite a bright screen. It's not that dark in here today, but you could see it was looking pretty bright, pretty contrasty. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. It also came with some other bits. So it supports the active cooler inside this plastic case. So we've got a plastic case uh, which the screen is designed to go out of the case and on top, so the fan will still add some cooling to the Pi and also to the, to the LCD display. But this case is for uh, Pi 5, but it also works with the Pi 4. So if I grab this and pop it on my Pi 4, again just on the GPIO pins, squeeze that down, you can see that it fits really nicely on there. Don't have to do anything else, any, any screws or anything like that. So the QR code in the box takes you to this website, MHS 3.5 inch display. And if we scroll down through, you can see that we're running at 320 by 480. So it's LED display, nice close up of the back of it here. And the what the pins do. And you can download an operating system and install this into it. But it didn't work for me with uh, Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye uh, running Wayland. But it did work if I changed to X11 as the window manager. And that's the only operating system I've tried on Raspberry Pi 5. But the good thing about Raspberry Pi 4 and before is there's lots of already made operating systems with the drivers in there for the screen. Raspbian, Ubuntu Mate, 32 and 64-bit. I've downloaded 64-bit. Uh, we've got Kali Linux. RetroPie for the Raspberry Pi 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0. I haven't tried out my 0, 2, W yet, which may be slightly different. So I downloaded the Pi 4 version of RetroPie and I just downloaded the Mega Downloads, uh, unzipped it and then wrote it to the SD card with Raspberry Pi Imager and all of that was very easy, it just worked straight away. So let's have a look at Ubuntu Mate on this tiny little screen. So as you can see, very tiny again for a desktop operating system, but it does work with the stylus and everything. I'll use the mouse and keyboard just because it's easier uh, than using the little stylus. But with a desktop operating system, you do struggle to get everything on there. Obviously some work better than others. At least I have folder access. So I guess if I was trying to copy uh, some photos from a camera or something like that onto this as a small computer that you can carry around, um, but I'm thinking more maybe something like a virtual assistant. Um, but let's shut this down because RetroPie actually works pretty well. So I've got an Xbox 360 controller. Let's just zoom in and just show that we can toggle through all the different systems that are on here. Obviously some work better than others. Uh, Game Boy Advance was about this sort of size anyway. So the games are designed to be played on this tiny screen. 
So WarioWare is an excellent game. Haven't got any sound plugged into this at the moment. Obviously you could use headphones, Bluetooth speakers, things like that. And the display, you can see dots on the, what the camera's picking up. I don't see that at all with the naked eye. That's really weird. I wonder if that happens if I, if I twist it. Yeah, that's really odd. So you're getting that sort of mosaic effect. I'm not getting that at all. It looks incredibly crisp and really smooth for me. I have plugged in a speaker. It seems a shame to game with that speaker. Now, if you haven't played this game, it is a brilliant game and works really well on this sort of size of screen. It's just a selection of mini games, but they get faster and faster. So when it comes on, so this is just a jumping exercise and you only have to jump once. So that was that one part of the level. And again, you're always pressing the same button and using the controller. So really simple, but so addictive, especially when it speeds up and the boss stages and things like that are really good as well. So here we go, so we have to flee the balls and dress him. And extra stages have more, more elements to them. But yeah, even things like this, a bit of spy hunter in there. So here I've got it stomp on top of it. And you've got to punch at exactly the right time on this. And it goes all the way over the top. I have played this before. So if I press select, start and the home button, that takes us back to the menu. What else can we try? So obviously Game Boy and Game Boy Color will be decent as well because they're also tiny little screens. Bit of Mario Tennis. And this looks good on the screen. Are we getting that? Yeah, we're getting that same sort of mosaic -y effect, but it, it, the camera picks it up, but I don't see it at all with the naked eye. And even games like this were very playable. Ooh, nice. I used to play this quite a lot on Game Boy Advance because I used to run all the emulation on Game Boy Advance as well. Let's try something a bit more advanced. I haven't tried Retropie on Pi 5 to see if that will work. Some of the Mega Drive games and things like that will work. N64, Road Rash 3D. That looks pretty nice. So it's the left trigger button is the one that's configured for Accelerate. What does right trigger do? Nothing. Yeah, definitely the, the buttons aren't con aren't configured correctly. I can't. I haven't got any punching, have I? No, none of the buttons seem to be punching or kicking. Oh, it's the analog stick. Nice. Yeah, that's working all right. Let's see if we can get it to work on battery power. So let's shut this down. And I've got some Pi Sugar adapters. Uh, so one of these, I think this one's for the Pi 4, this one's for a Pi Zero. Obviously with the Zero, you're gonna get much better battery life. So if you're only using the more basic systems, then that would probably be the one to use. But let's use this one because I've got the image downloaded for Pi 4. And this is just a proof of concept at the moment. Now I haven't used this for a while. See it connects to GPIO pins, but it connects underneath. So I'm just screwing in the four plastic screws that clamp this together. And when it's all lined up, you can see the GPIO pins basically overlap. So it's putting power into the Pi via the GPIO pins. Let's switch on. Oh yeah, it's come on. So all on battery power. Let's see if it launches RetroPie. Yep, it's booting up. So launching emulation station. I haven't got the USB stick in here at the moment. So you can see it's detected various different systems and all of that is working, all from batteries. So we've got the makings of a nice little handheld system and how this battery has, has held its charge for so, I haven't used it for ages. That's really quite impressive. And you just switch it off on here. So I've been trying to get Android working and uh, unfortunately it just comes up with a white screen. I've tried all sorts of settings and changes, um, but I've also put it inside this casing. You can see there's a couple of holes here so you can mount it with screws and uh, it's a plastic case but it does the job fine. Uh, I like the fact that it's got the button here so you can see when it's launching uh, and that is actually a micro switch as well. 
So you can switch it on and off with that. So basic, but does the job. This folder has all the boot partition for Raspberry Pi OS, which I had working with this three and a half inch display after installing all the drivers and everything. And so I pretty much copied most of the um, extra bits out of config.txt. You can see there's quite a few bits here, all to do with display, but I don't think any of the other bits are, and lots of it's hashed out anyway. So I've just put the Android card in, and uh, this is the boot partition. And I played around with uh, config.txt and added some extra bits, but also resolution.txt, I changed to 320 by 480. Actually, I didn't try 480 by 320. That's worth a go, you never know. Yeah, it still doesn't seem to be working. Android can be a bit fussy with displays compared to lots of Linux operating systems. Because we know that three and a half inch operating systems are usable with touchscreen devices. So this is a little iPod touch second gen. Same screen ratio, same screen size. And let's just log in for a bit of nostalgia. It is such a great device. So this was based on the original iPhone screen. Uh, and you can see the YouTube app looked very different back in the day. I'm amazed it still works. Uh, and it still works all right as well. So some of these games aren't available now. Uh, you can't get them through the App Store. So Fruit Slice, which is available. No multitasking at all on this. So if you, put, if you hit the home button, it just closes the app. Yeah, I used to use this as my main device uh, at work for web browsing. I used to tether it to a little Nokia phone. And, uh, you know, it was just a much better web browser at the time. But anyway, thanks very much to 52Pi for sending me this screen to test. I'm sure we'll see it in future videos. Hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.